Good afternoon, everyone. We thank you very much for joining us. My name is Lyle Griffiths, and I will be your moderator for today. Today we will discuss what the new street food vending law means to you, the food cart manufacturers. Uh, just want to let everyone know this training will be recorded. And Sarah Shakir from the Industry Engagement Unit at Environmental Health will be our presenter today. Two subject matter experts will be answering your questions along the way, as well as at the end of this presentation. Our experts are Swati Bhatt, uh, the Environmental Health Services Manager, and Denise Naborio, the Chief of Plan Check here at our Baldwin Park headquarters. So let's get started with a couple of housekeeping items. If you need translation, please click on the ellipsis or the three dot icon, and you will see the option to translate slides. If you mouse over that icon, you will see about 19 available languages to translate your slides into. Click the language that you prefer, and after a quick period of processing, all of your slides will be translated into the language of your choice. Please take advantage of this ability if it helps you. We will host another webinar in Spanish next Monday. We will give more details about this webinar at the end of this presentation. This presentation runs about 30 to 40 minutes long. Again, we will take your questions along the way and at the end. To ask questions, type them in on the chat or raise your hand by clicking on the icon at the top of your screen so that we can see your reaction and unmute your microphone. We will pause along the way to give some answers and take the rest of your questions at the end. So this time, let's jump in. Sawar Shakir, take it away. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Again, my name is Sarah Shakir and I will be your presenter today. Many of you have heard about the Senate Bill 972, the new street food vending law. This webinar is focused on you, the food cart man manufacturers. So let's take a look at what this bill does. So SB 972 was signed into law last September and it will become effective on January 1st, 2023. The bill does three things. It creates a new chapter in the California Retail Food Code. It creates a new type of food facility, and it modifies at least two definitions in CalCode. The new type of food facility is called a compact mobile food operation or a CMFO. So what is a compact mobile food operation? Well, it's a stand, a showcase, a rack or a display that offers more than 25 square feet of prepackaged, non-potentially hazardous foods like prepackaged snacks, like chips, nuts, bottled drinks and whole produce. It is also a push cart, a pedal driven cart, wagon or other non-motorized conveyance that may be approved for sale of prepackaged potentially hazardous foods or approved for limited food preparation. So Senate Bill 972 expands food vending opportunities in three ways. It reduces the structural requirements for a food cart. It reduces the operational requirements for a food cart, and it expands the cottage food operation class B uh, businesses. So we're going to discuss these three in more detail as we go along the way. So how Senate Bill 972 expands food vending opportunities by uh, expanding or reducing actually structural requirements. It does this uh, because it no longer requires a three compartment sink for limited food preparation carts if they have enough spare utensils, but they must provide a space to separate soil and clean utensils. They cannot handle any raw meats, raw poultry or raw fish on site and uh, it also Senate Bill 972 doesn't require a water heater on the cart anymore. 
So carts, mostly still have at least five gallons of water for hand washing, but this reduction allows for a smaller water tanks. So these two things may allow the carts, the new carts, uh, to be a smaller because they don't require any more wear washing sinks or water heater. But let's remember that they cannot handle any raw meat, raw poultry, or raw fish on site without the required sinks or the hot water. Another thing that is done to reduce structural requirements within the Senate Bill 972 is to allow for the use of auxiliary units to support hand washing and wear washing requirements for compact mobile food operations or CMFO that do not handle raw meat, raw poultry or raw fish. It allows for up to four food carts lacking the required sinks to operate at an approved fixed location if they share these approved auxiliary units for hand washing and wear washing. There must be a person responsible for the auxiliary units and they must obtain a permit by submitting a, a site plan uh, for the that identifies um, the location and the auxiliary units in the location. And perhaps this uh, next slide is one of the main advantages for you, the food cart manufacturers. Um, that Senate Bill 972 provides for, which is uh, what is called a model a standard plan. So local jurisdictions uh, will be allowed to approve a model a standard plan. And what this is, we'll go, we'll cover it a little bit more in detail in a couple more slides, and we'll talk about the process towards the end of this presentation as well. But a Model the standard plan uh, will allow you to build multiple carts from one plan. The initial submission fee will cover the initial plan review and the final inspection of the first manufactured cart. Again, additional carts that are manufactured from these approved plans will require uh, only the payment for a certification inspection to ensure that the cart was manufactured to the standard plan. And uh, the details we'll cover in a couple more slides. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat uh, or raise your hand by clicking on the reactions on the top of your screen so we can unmute your mic. OK, so. Another thing that Senate Bill 972 does to expand food vending opportunities is to reduce the operational requirements for the food vendors uh, on site. So it requires only the food handler card, not a food manager certificate. And it also expands what is allowed as a, as a limited food, part of the limited food preparation. This is also one of the big changes in Senate Bill 972, because it will allow for hot or cold holding on site, uh, reheating, cutting and slicing of produce, and of food for immediate service, food that was prepared at, a, at an approved uh, food facility. It's still uh, operators must still hold uh, potentially hazardous foods at approved temperatures, 41 degrees for cold holding and 135 degrees for hot foods. Cold holding uh, will require mechanical refrigeration. There is also uh, expansion of activities, um, things that can be done by cottage food operations class B. And then just as a quick reminder, these types of facilities are uh, cottage food operations that prepare mostly uh, non potentially non potentially hazardous foods at at a home at an approved home, a permitted home and that sell directly or indirectly uh, to the public. So uh, Senate Bill 972 allows uh, CFOs B 
uh, to sell approved cottage food items on up to two uh, CMFO cards. This is in addition to the direct and indirect sales that they already do. And also it doesn't uh, count those sales at the CMFO cards towards the annual gross sales. They can also uh, uh, store and support the sales on the CMFO cards. Uh, and they can, I'm sorry, they can store these CMFO cards at home. Uh, we will need to do a site evaluation and include that as part of the permit, but that is also an expansion uh, of activities that can be done under Senate Bill 972 for Cottage Food Operations Class B. Do we have any questions? I think I see some hands. Lyle, do you want to? Uh, take a couple of questions. Yes, thank you very much, Sarah. So at this time, I see there's there are no questions in the chat, but there is a hand that is up. I'm going to go ahead and refer to Matt. I'll go ahead and allow your microphone to record your audio, and you can go ahead and present your question, Matt. So your mic is enabled. You can go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask your question and we will be able to hear you. Sorry about that. Um, so are the CMFO carts, um, uh, do they, are they required to be listed as a food cart uh, under ANSI? So do they have to go through the laboratory process and be ANSI certified NSF? Okay, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, Swati or Denise, would you like to provide an answer? Hi, this is Denise Naborio. I'm sorry, I'm I'm with Swati, so you can see her name, but it is uh, Denise Naborio who's speaking. I'm the chief of plan check. And um, it's not the whole cart that not needs to be ANSI certified. What we're looking at are equipment um, that meet ANSI certification. There is a change in the law, though, that does allow for other certification programs. So if there's something other than ANSI, another program that possibly, you know, approved equipment, we can take a look at that. You would just need to present that to us for review. OK, thank you very much. And wait a few moments if there's anyone. OK, there's another. Something just got added to the, to the chat. Yeah, I think Matt was asking if it would be Radko, if Radko would be OK. Oh, I'm Did sorry. So Radko um, is uh, something that we've approved for other than uh, ANSI certification for sanitation. So when it comes to electrical and gas, um, and gas uh, Radco is another uh, a third party that we can uh, that can evaluate to electrical and gas safety, so we would accept that. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. We can wait a few more moments to see if anyone has any other questions. You can go ahead and use the reaction option if you'd like to raise your hand. Uh, we have another chat addition. The question asks, would you accept it for all the carts built to that standard? or referring to RADCO uh, approval. Sorry, Denise. <laughs> yes, yes, we are reading the we are reading the message. Would RADCO be so it, it's the question of is if RADCO is OK, is that the question? Accepted for all the so what what I can do I can uh, I can enable Matt's uh, microphone again so you can ask your your question provide more. Okay, details. sorry about that. So the issue that we're talking about, uh, as you guys know, we had the tamale carts uh, certified, but we've waited a long time for the laboratory to get us the ANSI certification for NSF. In the meantime, we got we had Radco certify the cart. The carts are all the exact same carts. But every time we come back to permit a new cart, you want another RADCO certification, which is another 450 to $500. So my question is, 
under this new S, S, under SP 972, will the RADCO uh, certification of one cart that is the exact same as all the other carts be enough? Or are you going to ask RADCO to do each individual cart over and over and over again? I understand your question. I think that's something that might have to be determined here. I know that we were asking for each cart uh, to have that certification, um, but I think we'll probably get back to you regarding this this question. OK. OK, thank you very much. At this time, I don't see any other questions in the chat, so Sarah, we can proceed if you're sure, unless you want to sure. give us a few more seconds. I think we can proceed and then if there are more questions, we'll take them in a couple more slides uh, in. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. And another thing that uh, Senate Bill 972 does is to expand food vending opportunities, it provides for one exemption for a public health permit. And that is uh, there is no permit required when bending from a person, a stand, a rack, or a food cart if selling less than 25 square feet or 25 square feet of only prepackaged, non potentially hazardous food or whole produce. If there are more than 25 square feet for sale, then a permit is required. OK, so I'll let that simmer a little bit. If there are any questions, we can take them. If not, we'll go to the next slide to talk about new commissary options. Oh, OK, okay we so we question. have one hand. OK, let me go ahead and find we have Rob. So I'll go ahead and allow your mic. You are now enabled. When ready, you can unmute your mic and. OK, let, great. Thank your you question. So, yeah, thanks so much for, uh, for for allowing my question here. I just wanted to make sure um, so for for my operation, for example, I'm looking to um, sell drinks uh, um, uh, on the street. So as lo so what this is saying is as long as my um, I have like a mobile bar kind of setup, as long as it's 25 square feet or less, I do not need a permit whatsoever to be able to sell that beverage that does not include any um, non potentially hazardous food or drinks such as milk or doesn't include any of that. OK, thank you for your question, Rob. Uh, Denise or Swati, would you like yes. to answer? Yes. Uh, hi, this is Swati. So as long as the the CMFO is less than 25 square feet and only sells prepackaged, non potentially hazardous food or whole produce, then uh, the the Senate bill uh, exempts uh, those operations from having a permit. So if you have any open beverages, um, then then you know you have to comply with uh, with the dif with different standards or requirements. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, do we have a chat addition? Uh, please give some examples of the prepackaged, non potentially hazardous foods. Can they be prepackaged? At, at, sorry, I'm sorry. This is a second uh, part of that question. Can they be prepackaged at a commissary? If 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 there is an approved commissary, uh, it it can be prepackaged. Uh, we do have to verify if, if that has to be commercially prepackaged and um, if it comes from an approved source, yes. OK, thank you. And the first part of the question asked to uh, give some examples of the prepackaged non potentially hazardous foods. So it can be bottled water, bottled soda, um, you know, ch chips, cookies. Um, whole uh, fruits or vegetables. So. OK, I, you and I didn't. Thank you. OK, so there's uh, one more chat has been added. So although it is non potentially hazardous, however, uh, if I make the drinks on site, would I still need a permit? Yes, if you make drinks on site, uh, it will uh, you know, that operation will be required to have a permit. 
OK, thank you very much for your response. At this time, uh, OK, there's one hand up. Let's go ahead and. Enable your mic. Your mic is now enabled. You can ask your question. Hi, good afternoon. I I actually work for the Department of Economic Opportunity, and we do get a lot of questions about cottage food. So looking at this 25 square foot or less, does this mean that a cottage food operator type A could sell their products on a rack if they have their cottage food type A um, a little uh, permit? OK, thank you for your question. Uh, Denise or Swati, would you like to respond? Um, so uh, based on SB 972, um, you know, uh, only uh, cottage food B, which is permitted operation by our department, uh, could support the CMF, the cottage, uh, you know, the compact mobile food operation, not the cottage of CFO class A. OK, thank you very much for your response. So at this time, we're going to be continuing with our presentation and we will um, stop for questions at the next break. So Sarah, back to you. Yeah, great questions. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, please keep on typing your questions and we'll take them in a couple more uh, slides. So uh, I was starting to say that another uh, advantage or another uh, expansion that Senate Bill 972 does to uh, expand opportunities for food, uh, street food vending is to provide more uh, commissary options. So it does this by allowing commercial facilities and private homes to serve as commissaries. And there are a couple of details very important to clarify here. So first of all, commercial facilities, what are the commercial facilities we're talking about? Uh, cottage food B, class B, it's one. Uh, permitted community kitchens, like those kitchens in schools and churches, community organizations, but they have to be permitted by us. And permanent food facilities, of course, like restaurants, uh, retail food markets that have a permit from us. So they will require to get a site evaluation. Uh, we may be able to approve them without uh, plans, um, and they may be required to obtain an additional permit to serve as a commissary. In the case for cottage food operations class B, they may only support up to two carts. OK, so private homes can only serve as a storage uh, commissaries. They would still require a site evaluation. All the food that you know it's uh, sold from those CMFO carts will need to be prepared at a permitted <clears throat> facility, and uh, the approval for this storage uh, function for the private home is only an endorsement. It's not a public health permit, and we will do that first site evaluation. And we won't do uh, routine inspections or anything like that for the private home as a commissary, but uh, we will respond to complaints if we receive uh, complaints from the public. Okay. So I think we had another question. We can take that one, uh, Lyle, on the chat if you like, uh, and then I'll jump to the next section after that. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. So mm -hmm. the question that was added to the chat asks, what type of commissary would the uh, would the new carts need? So what type of commissary would the new carts need? Uh, Denise and Swati, would you like to respond? Hi. Yeah, sure. This is Denise. Um, so basically, uh, you know, a commissary is still required um, for carts, uh, but it really depends on the operation of that cart and how much it needs to be serviced. So really, um, you know, any commissary, public commissary we have uh, for a cart would probably work. However, um, what you're looking at on the screen right now are some ex expanded opportunities where 
uh, possibly a restaurant that's already permitted or a community kitchen that's already permitted could uh, qualify uh, to be a commissary as well. So, you know, I'm not sure um, if I'm answering your question correctly, but it, it really depends on the operation of the cart that would, uh, you know, let you know what type of commissary, a commissary that could support all the operations and the, you know, the cleaning and the supply of that cart. Okay, thank you very much. We have a new chat edition asking the question, uh, would an ice cream truck commissary be okay? You know, yes, as long as um, that ice cream truck commissary could support um, the operations of the vehicle. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, there are no more chat additions, so Sarah, we can proceed with the presentation. Thanks. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. So what does this mean for the food car manufacturers like you? So we have uh, three things on this slide that we think uh, would be advantages under the new law. One is probably one of the biggest ones is the standard plan. And there are two exceptions for plan submissions. So the standard plan, again, we'll cover it in a lot more detail in the next couple of slides, but it is intended to allow the manufacturing of multiple food carts with the same menu and the proposed operation. Fees will apply to the initial full uh, plan review and the final inspection of the manufacturer cart. And then after the first cart, every cart uh, after that would only need a site evaluation. So we will again cover this in a little bit more detail in the next couple of slides. But let's talk about the two except, uh, plan, plan submission exemptions that are included in this Senate Bill 972. So for uh, CMFO carts that have uh, that sell more than 25 square feet of non potentially hazardous foods in ice cream or paletas, uh, they wouldn't need to submit a plan, but they still need the site evaluation and to pay the fee for that site evaluation. Also for repairs and replacements of equipment in a cart, if they are like to like, like for like repairs and replacements, there is no need to submit plans. Uh, again, it would just be a site evaluation and a fee. Okay, I think uh, I have, I, I saw a couple of questions, Lyle. I'm gonna continue if it's okay, uh, Rob. Um, I'm gonna continue for a couple more slides and we'll take your question, okay? So, just want to present what the standard plan process would be. So, it would start with the current process, which is uh, on a step one on your screen, and it's the usual process. Uh, you will complete a plan check application, submit the plans that are easily readable and complete. Uh, you will pay the plan check fee and do corrections as needed. Then once your uh, plan on paper is approved, we'll go uh, to the three additional steps that are particular to the new standard plan. And you would build the first card that is a prototype, right? And we will do a final inspection on that prototype. Once it's approved on a step three, we will keep that approved plan on file for one year. And I'll repeat this in a couple more slides. After that, each additional compact mobile food operation cart that is built from this standard plan will only need a site evaluation and an attestation that the cart was manufactured according to the approved standard plans. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this one more time. So you, the standard plan would start with the current process, complete uh, the plan check application, submit the plans, pay the plan check fee, and do the corrections as needed. 
then you will build the prototype cart and get it inspected. Once it's approved, we will keep on uh, the, the approved plan on file for one year. And each additional uh, compact mobile food operation cart that is built from this uh, standard plan, it only would need a site evaluation and an attestation that the cart was manufactured according to the approved plans. So I know there are maybe a couple of questions on the chat. So Lyle, do, do we wanna take those? Yes, thank you, Sarah. So I will take, oh, I will read off the question. I think this one was submitted first and then we will get to the hands that are up. We have a question from Rob. The question asks, if we are serving tea, can that tea preparation be conducted at home? So if we are serving tea, can that preparation be done at home? Swati, Denise, yes. would you like to respond? Yeah, so, um, you know, the only uh, home-based operation that can sell uh, their product on, on a compact mobile food operation is the permitted CFO Class B. So whatever products are approved to be prepared uh, through that operation can be sold on, on that uh, CMFO supported by uh, CFO Class B. Um, currently, um, I think the dry tea is is approved to be, uh, you know, prepared uh, with CFO Class B permit, so that can be uh, sold. A prepackaged dry tea can be sold on those uh, CMFO supported by that operation. Uh, the second question is: Can any of the CMFO sell hot? Food. So any, like I said um, earlier, any uh, food item that is approved to be, uh, you know, uh, produced by CFO Class B operator, or that 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 item can be sold on on um, that CMFO supported by that uh, permittee. Um, so uh, if it is. Uh, you know, uh, so that's the answer for that question by Nick. And I think Richard Gomez has a question about the one year uh, after the one year lapse, a new plan must be submitted. Um, the answer is yes, at this time, that is that, that is going to be the practice. Uh, we can uh, we can discuss that further, but at this time uh, we are going to require that the plan is resubmitted after one year. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And there is one more question about brewing tea. Um, Sorry, this is Denise. It looks like it's the same person asking about uh, preparation of tea at home. But brewing tea at home right now is not one of the approved cottage food. Uh, foods that can be approved. Um, so at this time, no, that, that is not one uh, that you could uh, prepare at home and then sell on the cart. OK, thank you very much. So there is a hand that has been raised for quite some time. I'm going to go ahead and allow your microphone and you can now unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, this is Matt. Um, Geller, thank you uh, for all these, you know, this great info. The problem or one of the fears that I have is that you're going to see a lot of really innovative designs. Um, as you guys know, we did the tamale cart and one of the problems we ran into was that we were marketing the cart and people were calling your office only to be told that a cart like that would never be allowed. When having some conversations with people that work in your office in the vehicle inspection program, they don't know anything about the changes coming with SB 972. One of the concerns that we have is the lack of training and the lack of information and the fact that we're only three and a half weeks away from this becoming law is going to set some of us back. Because if we're creating new innovative designs, they get permitted, but the person at the front desk doesn't know anything similar to what we experienced this year, then you're going to be slowing us down and hurting our ability to do what this um, 
this bill was supposed to do, which is get carts in the hands of vendors. So can you just quickly tell us that <laughs> or maybe alleviate some of our stress that you're actually going to start hopefully maybe this week letting inspectors know, telling everybody behind the desk and keeping everybody up to date on what this what what SB 972 is going to do for them. OK, thank you very much for your comment, uh, Matt. Uh, Swati or Denise, Sarah, would you like to respond? Sarah, you want to take that question or I, I, I can? Uh, Swati, yeah, this is ahead. Lisa. This is Lisa. Hi, Matt. Um, yes, this, you know, in the beginning, as we roll out SB 972, we are going to keep it to a few of our team members because we do want to make sure that this, you know, this law is implemented correctly. Um, and we did do a great job, I think, working with you and Richard on the tamale cart, knowing what was coming forward with SB 972. And that's why we really started with our manufacturers to make sure that you were able to manufacture enough carts, right, to be able to provide to a lot of the food vendors that are really looking to the opportunities that this new bill provides. So, yes, our team, um, those that are need to be familiar with this, will be familiar with it and will work with the industry to make sure that it's rolled out smoothly. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, it looks like there are no other questions. There are no other hands raised, so we can proceed. Great. Uh, thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, and we will continue uh, to take your questions. And, you know, if, if you want us to uh, get back to you with some uh, longer conversation, feel free to let us know in the chat as well. Uh, and we can definitely uh, work that out. So um, what is the meaning of these, uh, these changes for your customers? for uh, the vendors. So when you build a, a standard, um, a CMFO card from a standard plan, what do they need to do, right? So they will need to call us to schedule an appointment to do a card evaluation. And you as the manufacturer will need to provide them proof of the approved standard plan the uh your an attestation that you build the cart from the standard plan and they would need to complete a uh, cmfo card evaluation application including the menu and pay the fee for the site evaluation then we will give them a, an appointment to go to a designated location to get their uh, CMFO card evaluated to make sure that pass the final inspection. And if the card and the menu are approved, we'll direct them uh, to fill out a public health permit application with the uh, standard operating procedures and the commissary or support unit documents. That is where they're going to leave the card uh, documents that support that and we will ask him to pay for the public health permit fee. When everything is approved, then we will issue, as we currently do, a, a sticker certification will be applied to the card, like, you know, the ones similar to the ones that we already have in place. Okay, so do we have any questions about this particular? I don't see any other questions here. So we're going to go to the next slide, um, which is about those customers that you may have who buy a cart <clears throat> that was permitted uh, from a standard plan. So if, if one of your customers buys, uh, sells their cart to, to another customer and they buy it, uh, this card was already permitted, what would they need to do? So basically it's pretty similar, but the one thing that would change is that when they schedule the appointment to get the card evaluated, they would only need to provide the permit from the prior, the, the previous owner. So that's the main difference. Then 
they would need to complete the application for the CMFO card to be evaluated, including in, in this case, the attestation would be from them. So stating that they haven't altered the cart uh, from the standard plan and they would provide the menu, pay the fee for the uh, evaluation. And then um, they would take the card to be evaluated um, at one designated location. If the card and the menu are approved, then they will submit a permit uh, application for a CMFO uh, permit with the standard operating procedures, the commissary support unit documents, and the permit fee. And once everything is approved, again, we will issue a certification a sticker and apply it to the card. If there are any questions, uh, we can take them now or I can go to uh, the next section. We have one more section and, and really it's just to talk about the length uh, of the approval for that standard plan. I think somebody had asked if it would be just one year at this point. Uh, yes, the standard plan would be approved for one year except in the case <clears throat> that the plan uh, has any, it's altered in any way, or uh, the menu changes or the law changes. And if the law changes, then we will let you know uh, that you need to submit another plan. <clears throat> and if the plan is approved in paper and there is no uh, prototype, built within one year, that plan that was approved on paper would also expire after one year. Okay, so at this point, um, I don't see any questions on the chat uh, or any hands raised, but this is, uh, okay, oh, I see one. Yeah, look, hand. Looks like okay. a hand just went up. So this is this is it for me, but I'll hand it over to you, Lyle, uh, to take more questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating in this conversation, and uh, I will leave you with Lyle for more questions. Okay, thank you, Sarah. So we have a question from Katie. I'll go ahead and allow your microphone when you're ready. Unmute your mic and ask your question. So Katie, you are you have the floor. You can go ahead and just remember to unmute your microphone so that we can hear you. Uh, if you're having any technical difficulties, you can also type your question into the chat. Okay, I'm, I'm not picking up any audio from Katie. Your hand is up. OK, so uh, maybe we're having some some difficulties here. All right, so at this time, I'll go ahead and refer over to the chat. Um, uh, Rob asks, are we still being given a one year grace period to operate without a permit? So the question is, are we still being given a one year grace per, uh, period to operate without a permit? Yeah, so this Denise? is like, sorry, and I, I'll go ahead and take that because I think Swati and Denise are probably going, hmm, good question. So now at this point, I mean, the law doesn't allow us to not operate without having a permit. So we will take our time to, of course, work on educating all of our food vendors to make sure that they are aware of the law changes. Um, but if you need a permit to operate, you still need a permit to operate. Um, what the law says is that we will not be issuing any citations um, for this initial year. Thank you very much. Uh, second question asks if a same if the same card is manufactured to satisfy different menus is a plan required for each menu. So if, if the same card is manufactured to satisfy dis different menus is a plan required for each menu. Hi, this is Denise. Um, so no, it, it wouldn't be required if it's the same exact card and it can support those menus. We 
may need to ask um, the vendors as they come in the, to provide a copy of that menu. So we and possibly a written operational procedure for that particular vendor so that we can assess the cart um, with what they're proposing. But it doesn't seem like if the cart is the exact same build that you would need to submit a plan for that. It, it, it could be the same uh, model plan if that's what you're talking about. Thank you very much. An extra question, Rob asks the question. Also, will this law and new guidelines apply to food markets? So will this law and its new guidelines apply to new markets? Hi, this is Fatih Bhatt. Uh, to my knowledge, this this uh, SB 972, um, you know, created this new category of food facility and all the requirements uh, would apply to compact mobile food operation. Uh, Lisa, uh, yeah. Lisa Sorry, did you want to add? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So existing food markets already have to comply with the California Health and Safety Code. So there's an existing body of law that food markets already have to apply and have a permit to be able to sell food. Thank you. OK, thank you very much for your responses. We can provide a few more moments for final questions to come in. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and conclude with our final survey and provide the appropriate contact information. So just waiting a few more moments. Perfect, so we have a question from Santiago. Can you explain what a permitted auxiliary conveyance is in regards to compact mobile food operations, access to hand washing and wear washing? So can you explain what a permitted auxiliary conveyance is in regards to compact mobile food operations access to hand washing and wear washing yeah so i'm gonna try this one because it this is new um so for an auxiliary conveyance um as it relates to the cmfo um is something that's going to be at a specific location uh there's you know, the auxiliary conveyance would be, I believe, either a three compartment sink or hand sink or both. Um, but it would require that, you know, whoever is applying for a permit for that auxiliary conveyance does submit to us um, plans, a site specific plan with um, the location of, of those auxiliary conveyances. So we would review that um, separately. I, I don't know if I'm giving you enough information to what you're asking, but it it would allow for a CMFO to come to the single operating site and use that, you know, share a hand sink, a three compartment sink with other vendors. I think it's up to four, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that can operate at that one single operating site. And they themselves on the CMFO would not be required to have that uh, those sinks. OK, thanks very much. We have an additional question from Richard. The question asks, where can we get a list of food that's allowed under Class B cottage permit or CFO permit? So where can we get a list of foods that would be allowed under the Class B cottage food operation permit? Hi, Lyle, this is Lisa. I went ahead and I posted um, the actual document mm -hmm. to the link yeah. for CDPH website. And so um, the state of California actually has to approve of those food items and they do publish it on their website. So I added the most current link into the chat. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from Jennifer. Uh, when will you confirm whether prepackaged food will be required to be done at a commissary by the vendor or commercially prepackaged? So when will you confirm whether prepackaged food will be required to be done at a commissary by the vendor or be commercially prepackaged? Denise or Swati? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, if I'm understanding correctly, if if a commissary is being used mm -hmm. to, uh, to prepare foods and uh, prepackaging those items at the commissary, I believe that 
should and can be allowed uh, as a food product on the CMFO? So is that yeah. the question? Uh, per perhaps a follow up can be um, added um, just as a follow up to the last addition that was provided uh, the list is not complete. Um, just the most recent updates. Is there a full list? OK, uh, perhaps some more. Is this in reference to the cottage food, the list of cottage food um, items allowed by the state? Uh, it According to this timestamp, yes, it looks like it was sent in response to that um, to the website that was provided. So perhaps more information can be given um, at a later time. The uh, right. related question was asked about a compilation of these questions into an, a frequently asked question document to be published uh, at our portal or on our website. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will have an yeah. FAQ that is being developed um, to address all of these questions and some questions that weren't asked that we anticipate being asked. So yes, we will publish these. Thank you very much. So right now it looks like our chat has been, well, we're at the end of our chat. I also don't see any hands being raised. So I'd like to direct everyone's attention to the slide provided here. This is the contact information for the plan check program as well as our mobile food program. I also want to. OK, a uh, comment just came in if we can upload the slide deck. This can be determined at a later date, perhaps, uh, unless Swati or Denise, are, you're aware about sharing the actual slide deck? Yes, we'll be posting the slide yeah. deck also. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Both in Excellent. English and in Spanish. Perfect. Thank you very much. So at this time, we'll go ahead and conclude. I would I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. We have two quick questions that will be posted just to provide some information or to receive some information from you, our audience, and to answer or to re review the questions, you can simply go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com, as you can see on your screen, and enter the code that's provided. The code is 26734319. So in response to the questions there, please add a few words summarizing your responses. You may type up to 25 characters for each response. So we'll be providing about one minute for everyone to submit responses. If you'd like to. If you'd like to give more detailed responses, please add your responses in our meeting chat. So if you'd like to add uh, more than 25 characters, feel free to add your response in our meeting chat. Your first minute will be beginning at this time right now. Thank you very much. So we have some responses coming in. What was difficult to understand? This is Sarah. Expiration of plan approval. OK, yeah, you have a limit of 25 characters. So yeah, it's OK to just abbreviate uh, any of you want to extend like Lyle said, you know, you can just uh, type it in the chat and we'll review. There is a second question. Uh, where would you like to know more about? I'm going to put again the QR code just in case people need it. This will help us improve the information that we provide to you. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, what do you mean, boom? Close. 
non-ANSI certification? They want to know a little bit more about non-ANSI certification. Okay. Okay, I think the time is up for the first question. Uh, Lyle, we can go to the second question. We'll give another minute. Okay, so we'll provide another minute. The second question is asking, what would you like to know more about? And we appreciate all your feedback that you can provide. Okay, so non-ANSI certification, uh, the allowance of hot foods. Okay, we have just over 20 seconds left for responses. So let's see, there is another one now. Okay, great. Okay, voting will be closing shortly. Again, we appreciate everyone's feedback this afternoon. So thanks everyone for your responses, for your feedback. Uh, we will be hosting another webinar in Spanish next Monday, December 12th at 1 p.m. Please be on the lookout for another reminder to register. Feel free to share with business partners and other interested parties interested in building food carts. The recording of this meeting will be posted in our website within a couple of weeks. Once again, feel free to contact the plan check team at 626-430 five five six zero for plan check related questions you can also reach out to our industry engagement team at six two six four three zero five one five six for anything else that's related to sb 972 so we thank you ev again everyone for your attendance and your attention for your great feedback and i hope everyone will have a great remainder of your day again thank you very much